straight into the numbers today, talking about uh, the Japanese gross domestic product growth, inflation numbers in the US and the euro area. We'll jump right into the inflation numbers with the US headline inflation coming out at 3.4%, and core inflation in the US at 3.6%. In Euro, in the Euro area, we saw headline inflation at 2.4% and core inflation at 2.7%. It's quite interesting to see these two different economies, environments, both had been dealing with high inflation. Last one year ago, Europe was at 7% inflation, the US was at 4.95%. To see where we are today, it's quite interesting to see that Europe is under that inflation mark. Maybe you can kind of give your opinions on why we see it the way we see it. Yes, what we see is from the European side that there are more countries that started to struggle already at the end of last year. And so this definitely helped to bring inflation down when people start to struggle, when economies are like companies who are the backbone of the economy starting to struggle. This also affects their employees, which affects the consumption. So uh, we have seen Germany uh, moving into a recession, now is coming out of a recession again, even though the inflation numbers last year didn't look so good with Europe, especially when the US inflation numbers already started drop, to drop. Inflation in the EU was still much higher, but now we see a different picture where we also see that the strength, which is still there in the US with, especially from our perspective, heavily driven by the government spending, that they now have more issues with bringing inflation back down. I mean, it was now the first time for a long time where inflation, or for a couple of months already, where inflation has to be, be in line with the expectations and not disappointed being too high. And also the first time for about six months now that core inflation has started to ease again. It's quite fascinating to try to look at the two places. And I think your point on these European, especially the German economy that mm. was in a recession, the Euro, the Euro area is in a lot of parts held up by the German economy, or it had been in the past. And so we see that that inflation kind of comes down as Germany goes through that. Where on the other side in the US, you know, they keep telling it's a great economy, it's a great economy, despite us seeing you know, some conflicting numbers starting to mm -hmm. bubble up. I mean, even if you look at the jobless claims and ongoing uh, jobless claims are starting to rise, although, you know, initial jobless claims might have fallen just a little bit. You know, we start to see these issues of an economy starting to head in that direction, where in Germany, you had the higher unemployment already during their uh, recession. You, they still have fairly high unemployment, but they're kind of on that uptick. And so there's this kind of this difference in how the economies are one being talked about germany was saying hey we're seriously having trouble the euro area we're having trouble the us despite inflation remaining fairly sticky i mean one year ago is 4.9 percent today we're at 3.4 percent okay it's going in the right direction but it's not going in the right direction quickly by any means and will a recession be needed to bring that inflation under control or can they kind of ride this out with, inf or with interest rates where they are to bring inflation down. And, and how will that play out? Yeah, I mean, the, the expectations surely are, especially this year, that there is a soft landing or a, a no landing in the US, which means there will be no recession. We are not that convinced yet. We think that, and we have talked about this over and over, that like under the surface, there are quite a few cracks which could show, or starting to show up and which could bring and drive the inflation into not the inflation, but the economic, uh, the economy into like more challenging water. Yeah. And, and I think if we look at that, we're going to see if the U.S. is able to pull off a soft landing or no recession this year, inflation is going to stick around for quite a bit longer in the U.S. above their target level. And if a recession comes, it will obviously help bring inflation or could help bring inflation down, depending on obviously how everyone reacts to it. Right. You know, it's something that concerns me when I look at the U.S. is the surprise amount of debt, especially credit card debt that we see continuing to rise and rise and rise. 
And so we see the American population, which fuels the American you know, companies, not only you know, there's international things at play, but if we keep spending, inflation is going to sit there. Yeah. We're not teaching the companies any lessons. We're continuing to pay for services with credit. So you know, that, that's one of the, the issues that I see in where the U.S. Is, is kind of struggling. And also the savings rate in the U.S. has fallen a lot. And that is also concerning because, I mean, in the first stage, people use their savings to, if costs go up, if costs go further up, they don't have any savings anymore. And so uh, the, the debt will accumulate. And we have also seen like outcomes of, um, from the service sector where a lot of smaller, medium-sized businesses are planning to further increase their prices. So services will become more and more expensive and this will have an impact on the, on the consumption of the uh, consumers. Massively. It's something we're going to be keeping our eyes on quite closely. Let's transition now into Japan's gross domestic product uh, growth rate. For the first quarter, some really bad news for Japan at negative 2% for the quarter, year on year, uh, which is super concerning. I mean, half a percent lower than even what forecasts and consensus were. Japan's in a really tough situation. They are. It's also interesting that within the last year and the beginning of this year, the Japanese yen has weakened quite a bit. And that was also due to like uh, low inflation still and low uh, interest rates. Then Japan made a first move recently, like two months ago, and now they are in this situation where GDP growth is negative, where they are like, I would say in a recession already. And then it's also the question, why is it so negative? And uh, one part we see is the consumption is uh, again, like where people are going through a challenging period and don't consume as much as they did. So import falls and uh, production starts to fall because no one or the demand isn't there anymore. And uh, what do you do if you're the central bank, the Bank of Japan, are you going to further increase interest rates? Because one reason is also like the inflation, which which is also above 2% and try to fight inflation. Or are you going to lower interest rates and make it easier for the for your people to get credits and to to buy more stuff yeah and 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 looking at the you know part of the reason that they were seeing this they saw this incredible contraction is the population in terms of personal consumption makes up over half of the economy of japan yeah and there was huge reductions in people just cutting their costs and saying, hey, we're not going to spend it on this anymore. We're, we're going to be take a more conservative approach to our spending and the things that we need and what are the basics that we're going to move forward with. I mean, there's also been some challenging in the automotive sectors in Japan, which certainly ha- have weighed heavily on their economy in the first quarter. And w- we'll see how you know, the, the bank moves forward with that, the Bank of Japan. And mm. your point is exactly right. Are they going to try to fight inflation? It's not hugely over their target, but it's still higher. And it's not a comfortable place, certainly. It affects the people. Yeah, and, and it's a, the currency where they're mm. at, you know, they can't really afford for inflation to continue to devalue their currency so so much longer. And at the same time, if no one's spending, man, their, their economy is in, in, in big trouble. Yeah, and who has to made up for the like the loss in consumption? And that's usually the government. And the government, we have also covered this in the past. Uh, I mean, government debt is quite high. And if they are going to increase that higher, that's another risk to their currency and to their economy. So yeah, it will, it will be interesting. We have to have a close eye on that, on the development of uh, the economy and also the currency. Yeah, that's great. So next week, we're looking at the inflation rates in Canada and England. Yes. And then one more thing in Germany, I think. Yeah, the purchasing manager index. Yes, correct, of the manufacturing, correct? Yeah. Yes, yeah. So we'll see. We'll be here next week to talk about that. Perfect.